Alright, I'm going to do this a little bit backwards. Usually I show you what I made instead of how I'm making it. And uh, this is a very, this is the first, first time for me to take this old saw blade right here. And hopefully when I get done today I'm going to have a skinning knife with uh, a wooden handle, polished up, sharpened up, heat treated, tempered, and um, that's the plan. So there's the before. Now, in order to um, to do this, I don't know if you can see or not, but I'm get the sun. So on the saw blade, I've traced out the shape that I'd like the knife to be. And um, I'm thinking that this saw is probably pretty hardened because it's a saw blade. We'll scrape a file on it and see what it sounds like. Take a look. Uh, it's not too terribly hard. Uh, not as hard as I thought it would was was going to be. But what I'm going to do anyway, because uh, in addition to uh, actually making the knife, I need to make up a, a forge. I'm going to make a paint can forge up, and um, so I, I have a little bit of prep work to do first. So I'm going to heat this saw blade up red hot, and I'm going to let it cool down very slowly. And that should soften it up even more so that when it comes time to cut it out, it's relatively soft. And then if I get lucky enough to get the, the um, paint can forge to work, then I will, um, I'll, heat, I'll heat treat that um, in some sunflower oil. That's the plan anyway. And we'll see where it goes from there. So that's the planned piece that I'd like to get out of there, but first I'm going to heat this up and let it uh, slow coolly so that uh, maybe it'll soften that steel up a little. Now, I didn't get it red hot. I was hoping that I would, but there's so much steel there that my little torch isn't, isn't, just put, isn't putting on enough heat. So. Son of a gun's hot. It's got to be better than it is. We'll let that cool slowly and uh, hopefully it'll soften up enough so when I hit it with a grind it'll cut it easily. Well, let's see. Alright, so the second part of this project is going to be to make the forge that I'm going to use to, uh, to heat treat the blade when I'm, when I'm almost done with it and then hopefully to be able to do more um, blacksmithing things. So, um, I'm going to use a regular paint can. I'll mix up some plaster in Paris and some kitty litter. Now I've seen online to use plaster in Paris and sand, and I've seen other um, information online about kitty litter being used for crucible uh, forges, kilns, things like that. So uh, instead of buying 50 pounds of sand, which I didn't need, I bought a little thing of kitty litter. So what I'm going to do, objective here, is I'm going to put this nipple in the side of this can, that's where the torch will go in. This is going to be a plastic Paris, uh, kind of like a fire brick wall inside here. I think I'm going to make it about an inch thick. Uh, this will be setting in a couple of bricks. The torch will blow inside there and I should have a, a pretty good um, amount of heat generated uh, just using a propane torch. So that's the plan. Uh, never done it before, we're going to find out. Alright, I guess I'm in frame here. Alright, here's the plan. What I'd like to do, I'd like to have the handles side to side on this. I think that's the way I want it. So envisioning the torch is coming in at an angle. I think I want to put this right about here. So I'll put myself a little mark there. So just do a center mark. Works for me. And then not having the right tool for the job, you're about to probably wince a little. The only thing I really have this one inch paddle bit. So I'm hoping that if I hold this block of wood against this on the inside, I will be able to drill through here with a wood paddle bit without drilling into my leg. So that's the plan. We'll see what happens. practicing 
safety last. <laughs> anyway, we got a hole in the damn thing. That's my glasses. So now I can just thread that little nipple in there. And try to leave maybe a, I would say, I hope almost an inch in there. But the idea is, I won't be using this torch, but when this thing's done, back up. we'll have a torch resting in there like that. And uh, hopefully it'll be a, a halfway decent forge. So what I'm going to do now is get that in the rest of the way, and then I'll start mixing up the plaster. All right, so this, this um, fire protection uh, mixture, I'm going to use about an equal amount of plaster. I'm trying to guess as to how much I need. I don't think I need the whole thing. Probably a little more than that. And an equal amount of the kitty litter clay. I was hoping this would be a little finer than it is, but it's not. Alright. Hopefully that'll be enough to do what I'm trying to do. I'm going to now add some water to that and mix it up. Alright, so I want it to be relatively solid or thick. So I want it to adhere to the sides of the can. Of course, I don't know what I want. I'm assuming what I want, right? But, yeah, something a little like Play-Doh, I think, is what I'm trying to go for. So hopefully I got a good mixture. Originally I put too much water in I had nothing but soup. So we're going to find out here soon enough whether or not I'm doing okay. So I'll keep mixing and we'll go for right. it. So I have a pretty thick consistency. Let's see if I can get to the frame here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start packing that into the can. And I hope... When I have enough, number two, that it sticks, number three, that it works. Throw that in there. It's got to be enough. Got to be. I'm hoping I actually have some left over to be able to put a layer on the lid. You can see that sticking very well. So I'm just trying to work it around the sides. I think I got enough in there to do it. You can see that or not. But uh, gravity's gravity's getting the best of me at this point. So what I want to do is just try to put a cap on this lid. Alright, there's the top. And then that's what the inside looks like. It's not too terribly bad. I got the torch going in there really low to help the drying process out a little bit. Hopefully, it won't crack or explode. But there's the forge. And that's cooled down now, so I'm going to start down in there. I got the uh, piece clamped down to a table. And I'm using a very thin off wheel on my small grinder and I'm hoping that it works easily. We'll see. Turn the table around so that I blow the sparks not towards the house.
Off. I'll go ahead and cut the rest. Alright, there's that. Hopefully that's enough to bring it off of there. There you go. There's the rough shape. A little bit bent, we gotta fix that. I'm gonna clean it up. Grind down the edges, get it right down to my pattern, and we'll see what it looks like then. the outline that I was going for. I think that's going to work well. I'm going to just clean it up a little bit, see what it looks like. I'm, not, well, I'm wondering if that fronts a little bit too um, too much. We'll clean it up and see what it looks like. See, but the problem that I have, in the focus or not, is that it's pitted pretty badly. I had to take a lot of steel off to get there, but hey, come on. There's a rough grind on one side. That's what it was. So I'm taking a lot of steel off. Again, it's a skinning knife, so I don't care if it's too thin, but. Well, I don't care if it's thin, but I don't want it too thin. Let's see what happens after I do this other side and get the same. All right, sanding it with 50. Yeah. Uh, this took a lot more grinding than I thought I was going to take. That's for sure. And I'm not done. I'm just. I mean, it's, the shape's there. I'm ready to put uh, put the handle on, I think, right now. So, I left that little nub out there for a lanyard ring, but I'm a little worried. I might not be able to finish the handle with that on there, so I might take that off just to make things easier. But I'm going to drill it out for the handle. I'm going to get the handle cut. I think I'm going to try some of this walnut that I have. And, uh, See how the hell to do that. Alright, I cut out a couple pieces of walnut. This is going to sit on there like that. And this piece goes on top of there. I think that'll look nice when we get done. So I marked out a spot here and here. I'm going to use these smaller brass rods. I'm going to drill that out drill through the wood, get it so that I can um, mount the, uh, the handle on, and I think it's going to be time to heat treat. Alright, so I think I'm ready to heat treat this. I don't know if I should clean it up more or not. Um, I haven't put the edge on yet, but I think it's, I'm supposed to heat treat it now, temper it, and then, um, and then put the edge on, polish it all up, put the handle on. So that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, my forge, you can tell it's still damp down there, so this thing hasn't dried out yet. Um, so I'm not going to risk using that. I'm going to try to to just do this open air uh, with a torch. I'm sure it's not the right way to do it, but it's my first attempt, and you might as well have a good excuse for failing. I'm going to, when it's at the right temperature, which 
Everybody says you know it's the right temperature when you can't stick a magnet to it. So I got a magnet here. Um, I'm going to quench it in, I guess any oil will do, motor oil, peanut oil. I chose sunflower because it was $3 less than peanut oil. But it's a one-time investment. I don't imagine that you ever need to... Well, I'm never going to have to replace it. So I got a gallon of sunflower oil. I'm going to put in this gallon paint can where it'll stay forever. Hopefully it won't burn up in my face. And the plan is that as soon as this thing gets white hot enough, and I hope I can get it hot with my torch, maybe I'll get two of them going, to the point that this doesn't happen, the magnet doesn't stick, then I'll go ahead and dip it into the sunflower oil. So let's see what happens. I had it up there where the magnet wouldn't stick to it, so I want to get it on tape. So that's about the right temperature right there. And you see the magnet doesn't stick to it. So I'll get it up to that temperature again. Try to get the whole blade. I can't get the whole blade in the handle because it just cools down too quick. I need the forge for that. So we're going to call it. Right about there. I'm going to quickly quench it in the oil. So that it can cool. Leave it in there for a little while. We'll see. I'm sure this isn't going to be the best. But if I had my forge going, I bet you I'd be in pretty good shape. It's a pretty color like that. My knife warped a little. So I need to deal with that. But I'll deal with that, I think, after I temper it. Um, my forge wasn't working, so I, I had to kind of do it the, the wrong way. But uh, I think it still worked well enough. If you listen, that's the, the sound of the file where I definitely heat treated. And if I file down here on the handle, it bites in. So it's definitely hardened down here. There's no doubt about that. So I think, that, um, I think that's going to be good enough for a first try. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and temper it. Um, everybody says to put it in the oven for at 400 degrees for a while. I think I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to temper it with the torch. Um, just bring it up to the right temperature. Um, I'll try to uh, leave the edge a little bit harder than the, the top. Again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Alright, I'm kind of in a hurry now. I just got a call from the kids and I got to go take them someplace I didn't expect to take them. So I'm kind of rushing now. Just kind of cleaning this handle off with alcohol. The blade is not at all what I thought it would be. But it doesn't mean it's going to be wrong. It just means it ain't what I thought it was going to be. So I need to mix up my epoxy and then um, glue this thing together, so hold tight. Alright, I've let this sit for a couple hours. Probably should let it cure overnight. This is what it is. I'm working on a schedule here. So that's what it is now. I'll hit it with the sander and we'll get the handle ground down. I got a lot to take off of one side. We'll see what happens. Just give you a quick update on the forge. Um, it was too wet for me to use, but uh, I got the thing iron in here. So I think it's a heavy duty iron in here. And it's red. I think it's smaller than in this pan. And maybe a little more mixed would be better. But it does work. I think um, for a first knife it's pretty good. I need to get um, a honing stone or a good honing stone to put an edge on it. I can't quite figure out how to get the um, edge on there, I think, any other way. 
uh, as far as sharpness goes, it's uh, that's not too bad. I mean, uh, the paper is not cooperating. It's not perfect, but it cuts. I guess you're supposed to name your knives, so this one reminds me of a goblin for some reason. So I guess we're going to call this my first knife, the goblin. Goblin gutter, how about that? Got hook on the end, nice big blade for skinning, walnut handle, full tang, brass rivets, mirror shine. I don't like the mirror shine by the way.